again everyone, Tracy here from Mini Scenes. People have been asking about these coasters. Uh, Lynn, thank you for the initial request. A couple of other people have asked since. Um, I'm going to show you how to do them today. Now, I am going to be trying something new though, because somebody, may also have been Lynn, I can't remember, but somebody asked which way up in the mould you generally work. Well, of course, normally you work that way down in a mould. So you're this surface here is your top. Now, the thing with these is, because I'm using water slide transfers, I've been working up the other way, so actually they come out of the mould like that, but then of course you've got to dome them. So today I'm going to try and do it the other way up, because I have realised that water slide transfers actually appear to be the same on both sides. I experimented with this one, um, and I did this one up that way, the normal way of doing coasters, so you haven't got to mold it, um, dome it afterwards, and it seems to have worked. So I'm going to have a little bit of an experiment at doing that, um, but I do think I might have a way of doing the water slide up the right way. Oh, anyway, all will become clear. So tools today then: cheap mold, a pair of scissors for cutting up my water slide transfers. Of course, the water slide transfers. Now, um, these are made by, inspired by Diane. She does also do them as stickers. You just let her know which you want, whether you want stickers or, or water slides. Um, I simply go for water slides because I think they, they're thinner and finer, which might work better in the resin. Don't know, I'm gonna order a set as just as normal stickers at some point and see how that goes. But I think for what I'm gonna try and do today, this, this should work. So I'm going to get brave and use one of the big ones. The other things I'm going to need, obviously once that's in there, I'm going to need some resin. And today I'm going to be using the Let Resin one instead of my Union Jack Arts that I've been using lately. This is it. These are some whopping big bottles because I ordered a huge job blot a while ago. So I've got a little bit left in the bottom to use up. Uh, it's a two-parter, one-to-one, so nice and easy to mix. And I have had very, very good results with this Let Resin one. Later on, I'll be using whatever inks and, and uh, you know, things I want to use to make this nice, hazy and metallic-y background. But we'll come to that later. Other than that, saucer and some water. That's our initial stage. So, having already put that thin layer of resin in the bottom of here, which is cured overnight, um, I haven't got to get the resin out just yet. Now, with these water slide transfers, because the backing is so fine, you don't need to be too fussy about the cutting. Because all of the surrounding paper will just disappear into the resin. So, what we do now is we get a little dish of water and let that lift. It's going to take about two or three minutes, so we'll be back in a sec. Here we are then, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. It should be, it's, a bit, it's only been about two minutes by the way, um, it should be starting to move. I think it is. You leave it a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm going to see it's starting to crinkle slightly. And what you should see is it'll move. Yeah, it's starting to lift and move. To give it a second longer. Now I am going to try and put this face down onto this coaster. So I'm putting a little bit of water on the surface to allow me to move it. Uh, obviously I'll need to get that afterwards. It does make me wonder whether I could just soak it straight on the mould. Now normally you would put this up the other way, you'd just slide the water slide, tr the, the actual sticker off the front. So this is where I'm trying something entirely new here. I don't honestly know if this is going to work. But it's looking promising. See normally they're called, <laughs> they're called water slide because you can just slide them off. But I actually think that was easier and it's gone down flat. Right, next step 
is that very gently I'm going to take a piece of tissue to get rid of the water I'm going to take a piece of tissue and I'm just going to dab very gently to get the worst of the water out and as you can see because I put water under this it is sliding around so I can make sure I've positioned it now I think these are actually the same up either way these water slide transfers so it probably doesn't matter whether I did it face down like that or whether I did it the traditional way and slid it off because that's what I did with this one but it just occurred to me that it actually might be easier to get it off the backing upside down rather than try and slide it over and you know what I think that was easier there's another little tip excuse my rather sore looking thumb had a bit of an incident with the boot lid of a min the Mini 9X at the, uh, at the museum <laughs> when I was doing a tour just caught my thumbnail on the edge of the boot lid tailgate whatever you want to call it and I was shutting it down as long as the car isn't damaged that's really all that matters genuinely in this case and it wasn't right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just leave that I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours because I want to make sure it's really dry and has settled down onto that surface in the meantime I'm going to decide what flowers and things I want on the back of it because I've run out of the daisies. Um, those were real daisies, so I'll see what other flowers I've got in stock. But the next stage when I come back will be just to put another thin layer of resin on the back because that's how you get that sort of 3D effect. Can you see it's kind of 3D? It's layered up, layers of resin um, and layers with stuff in like the flowers and the bee. So I'll be back in about probably an hour. I might get impatient and stick some heat under it to make sure it's uh, really, really dried up. So back soon. Right, and we're back with our little bee. Now, as you can see, he's settled nicely onto that resin layer. There's a few little bubbles underneath. Not too worried about those, but that has dried out. As long as there's no water under there, that's all that really bothers me. A few little bubbles with this uh, technique doesn't really matter. If it did matter, well then I'd just spend a little bit of time pushing them to the edges and uh, making sure they were gone. But it doesn't. Now, what I want to do now is, firstly, put on a bit of clear resin, because we're on to our backing. So first of all, put on a little bit of clear resin and then lay down some flowers. And for that, it. Where are we? Right, here we are, we're back with our little bee. As you can see, he settled down nicely onto this base of uh, very thin layer of resin I'd put already into the mould. There are a few little bubbles, I'm not going to worry too much about them. If I really was worried I could push them out, spend a bit of time just pushing them out to the edge so they would go, but for the design we're doing it really doesn't matter, a few little bubbles might add to the effect. So what I'm going to do now is put some um, dried flower bits in the back. We have run out of daisies so I'm going to try something else. Got these, which I think are rather nice colours. I think they're off a, off a hydrangea. Could be hydrangeas. Um, and I'm going to put a little bit of the cloudy effect in the background that I rather like for these projects. So I've already mixed up the resin. As you can see, I've got my gloves on. So there's that one. Oops. Just knocking things over in the background here. It do ignore me. Could be an almighty mess any minute now. Right, yes, so there's our resin. I was just going to show you what you're supposed to use for popping the bubbles. Well, one way. You can spray them with alcohol inks as well. But one way of popping the bubbles, rather than use the uh, over-fierce torch like I usually do and have been wrecking my moulds, this is one of those lighters you use for lighting a, a gas stove or, a, or your barbecue or whatever. It doesn't get quite as hot as that nasty evil torch that I normally use. Again, cheap as anything off eBay. And this one's very well used and rather tatty now, as you can see. Still works and they're refillable. 
Um, right. The lazy way of spreading it around. Let's do tip it. There we go. Now we've got a little bit of a layer there, as you can see. Now I am going to pull which ones? I think these peachy coloured ones, the very pale flowers. And I'm going to pull them off the little stems. Let's zoom you back out for this bit. Because I want these to be set back from the little bee. Not going as nicely flat because they're not pressed these, I think they're just dried. Um, they're not going as flat. So I might have to do a bit of creative squishing in a minute. Yeah, I want the bee to look like he's in front of them, which is why I'm putting them into a layer of resin behind. <laughs> Aren't they pretty? Don't look real, but I believe they are actually off a real plant. All of the story is look in your garden, there are art materials lying around everywhere. Right. This is what we're going to do now. That's it, they're squishing down into it. Just going to do a little bit of, let's do it with something that doesn't matter if I wreck it. Just pushing them down into the resin. And they seem to be taking up the resin and it seems to be sticking. I'm going to push from the centre so that I'm not getting too many bubbles trapped. I won't care if there's one or two. Hmm some resin on top of that one. Basically you just want them nice and flattish. They don't need to be completely flat but so that the resin works on top without having to make them hugely thick to um, stop any bits sticking out of the resin. That's all it is really. Okay so they are going to look like they are behind said B. Get them where you want them. I don't want them too regularly placed. I'm just going to put another little drop of resin onto the back of each of these because I want it in the resin rather than sitting too much on the top. There. So now this, you can see these coasters are getting, you know, that's, that's a good couple of layers of resin gone in. They get quite thick if you're doing lots of different colours and effects in them. So another little push, just make sure they're in. There's no bit sticking out. But I don't want to push them right down onto the back of the bee. Maybe one or two, one case or something, but you really want that 3D effect. So trying to get them at different layers in the le levels in the resin. Now what we're going to do is another little layer over the top tiniest little bit like that. I'm going to mix up some shimmery colours to go in the background because if you remember on this one I got quite a nice background shimmer and it doesn't matter whether that looks like clouds or like with this one it all, it all pulled into the centre. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever takes your fancy. I've got here some sparkly alcohol inks which settle terribly. I can't remember where I got these from but they were cheap eBay jobbies and I'm putting them into quite a lot of it into a little dot of resin that I decanted earlier. Now this one was an experimental one. This is a bit of my mica paste mixed in with some actual alcohol. Just I've got a bottle of basic alcohol. So it's an attempt to make a sparkly alcohol ink basically. Now you can see they do on the surface what you expect an alcohol ink to do. If you stir it in, you get this wonderful pearlescent swirling effect going on. Let's find another stirry stick. Here we are. But it's not a sol. I haven't put so much in that's made it solid. And also, I haven't put so much in that it'll stop the, the resin from curing. Now, what I'm going to do is just drizzle 
a little bit of this over the back in kind of lines. Because I'm trying to get the cloudy effect. I failed last time. It did that pulling into the middle effect instead. I think because I'm using ink in, in my resin. Which is rather nice anyway. I don't object to that at all. But I was trying to get a more cloudy effect. Now, as you can see, this is settling around the flowers rather. If you want it to sit behind the flowers, then just let this layer cure up first. But I'm not too worried about that. I kind of just want this idea that there's something behind the bee. Give him some sort of atmosphere. Does that make sense? I'm waffling, aren't I? I do a lot of waffling. I like waffling. If waffling was an Olympic sport. Is there a World Cup of waffling? There should be. Um, right. Now, what I might do with that is just draw my little stick through it, if I can do it without disturbing the flowers. And maybe I'll do, oops, maybe I'll do that a little bit as well. Let's make it wispy. See how that's going wispy? I'm trying not to disturb the little flowers though. Because don't forget they're in this same layer. I don't think that'll stay there. I think it'll go walkabouts like it did in the previous one. But we'll see. So let's just zoom you in so you can see what's going on. So we've got the flowers in there and now we've got some resin with a bit of alcohol ink mixed in it. What I will then do, just looking how far up the mould that is, when this is cured off I'll do a final finishing layer and then of course I've got some little rubber feet to stick on it. So I'll have a tidy up and I'll see you when that has cured or at least 90% cured um, in a couple of hours because it's on the heat map. Right then, the part you've all been waiting for. Let's demold. Now, we can, as always, trim away any little loose bits around the edges here. A lot of them will just pull away. That's just bits where it's gone up the side of the mould a little bit. Or you can just run a nail file around it, no problem at all. Okay, let's turn this over and have a look. Oh yes, isn't that nice? <laughs> and of course I haven't got a dome it or anything because this was the side that was previously the bottom. So that's answered my question, can I work upside down like you would with most resin project in a mould when using water slide transfers. Let's put it on a lighter background, hang on a bit. There, isn't that pretty? I'm going to run around the edge with my gold pen just to finish it off and I will be sticking some little rubber dots on the bottom just so that I can, uh, so it, it doesn't slide when it's being in use or scratch whatever tabletop. Other than that, that's pretty much finished. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Uh, really appreciate your support. Uh, thank you so much to those who subscribed. Anybody who would like to subscribe, please do just hit the button below the screen here. That's down here. And if you hit the little bell, it will also tell you when I've got a new video to upload. And there's going to be a lot. I've got quite a lot of catch up to do. So there's going to be a lot over the next few weeks before this study is down a bit. Um, and also, thank you so much to those of you who have uh, clicked the button below to buy me a coffee. Really, really appreciate that. I'm hoping to very soon have a proper daylight lamp for my craft room. That's the thing I'm saving up for right now. And uh, that'll enhance the quality of the videos as I can bring you no end. So thank you and enjoy your crafting.